Hey, I'm David Duran and this is How Many. Today I'll be checking out The Grudge from 2004, directed by Takashi Shimizu and starring Buffy the Vampire Slayer. What a beautiful lie. I'm just saying, you know, yeah, it's, it's quite pretty, it's quite pretty. The Grudge is a remake from the original Juon from 2002, also directed by Takashi Shimizu. The film takes place in Japan, following three different timelines, but nothing we can't handle. Before we start, I have to remind you, subscribe to the channel, do it now, come on, I'll, I'll, I'll wait. You did it? Okay, okay. Uh, you didn't! Come on! Do it now, man! You're going to forget about it! Yeah? Okay, done? Okay. Now to the movie. When someone dies in the grave of a powerful rage, a curse is born. The curse gathers in that place of death. Those who encounter it will be consumed by its fury. Okay, now back to my handsome boys. A man named Peter is greeted by his girlfriend. And look at that girl. It's like she woke up 10 minutes before to do her makeup and brush her hair and went back to bed to be like, it's all natural, honey. Yes, lipstick comes out of my lips every morning. Natural. Peter doesn't look very well. Now he looks even worse. Now we're following Yoko, a caregiver, and a woman named Emma. In Japan, that is called a futon. It's a kind of a thin mattress that you put on the floor and sleep there, obviously. A lot of people in Japan use beds, but still, it's a very popular option. Yoko says, Moshi Moshi. That's a phrase you use when you pick up the phone. It was used to test if the network was okay, but today is a way of greeting by the phone. Yoko hears a sound and enters a room, where she realizes the sound comes from the ceiling. Yoko gets to the attic using a very weird entrance and a lighter. We move to Karen and Doc, two exchange students having a very good time, if you know what I mean. That's a very big street crossing. And that's a Buddhist cemetery, but this is usually goes for cremation, so there are no bodies here. Karen volunteers at the same care center Joko did. Arriving there, Alex, played by Ted freaking Raimi, Ask her to take care of Emma, since Alex hasn't been able to reach Yoko. I can't get her on the phone, she must be sick or something. And yeah, pretty sick. Karen arrives at the house where it looks like a natural disaster broke into. She's very good at her job, actually. Karen, same as Yoko, hears some noises coming out of the ceiling, but the entrance is locked with tape. From inside, she hears a cat, so decides she has to open the door and help the poor thing. There she finds a book, a cat, and oh boy, a boy! She immediately calls Alex to let him know about the situation and checks the book she found. That's a picture of Peter. Near the house entrance, she finds a picture of a family, but the face of the mother was cut out. The boy is looking at her from upstairs, both introducing themselves. The boy's name is Toshio. Karen goes to check Emma, she seems to be talking with someone and there's someone very special with her indeed. We cut to the time when Emma and her family moved to the house. The family entered the house and there are a lot of sleepers. That part of a Japanese house is called Genkan, and it's the area where you have to take off your shoes and wear sleepers, sometimes you could also just wear socks. Why wouldn't you keep wearing your shoes inside? Well, of course, because of dirt. The film implies Emma has a feeling about the house, as she went directly to the room where Yoko would disappear sometime later. 
The Japanese sage and goes to the bathroom, he's probably just, you know, making sure everything is okay. There he finds some black water in the bathtub, but when he tries to get rid of it... We'll take it. <sighs> okay. <sighs> well, that's, um, yeah. Next day, Jennifer, Emma's daughter-in-law, talks to her husband, Matt. She doesn't like Japan because she almost got lost when she couldn't find anyone who spoke English. And that is true. In Japan, a lot of people don't speak English, either because they are shy, a very common situation, or because they don't know the language very well. So going to Japan without speaking any Japanese is not a very good idea, especially if you'll move there. You can find a lot of academies to learn in Japan, though. Jennifer wakes up to the sound of someone walking around. On the stairs, she finds a black cat. Oh, nice cat. That, that was a nice, that was a nice one. Matt arrives late at night and sees Jennifer in catatonic state. What are you doing here? I don't like that, I don't like that, I don't like that. Back to our main timeline, Alex arrives to the house. Emma is dead and Karen is in shock. Police arrive. I'm Detective Nakagawa. This is Detective Igarashi. They look for the missing phone, which is inside the entrance to the attic. Detective Nakagawa and Igarashi go inside, finding the corpses of Matt and Jennifer and part of a jaw. That's it. Karen wakes up in the hospital. Dog is there too. Detective Nakagawa explains what they found in the house. There is a small talk between Nakagawa and Igarashi about some event taking place three years before in the same house. Now it's time to get back in time a little bit, just as Matt's sister Susan is leaving from work. Really, those sounds made her go to the stairs. I would be pissing my pants. Susan leaves the building, going straight to her apartment. That's really creepy. At home, Matt calls Susan. He rings the doorbell. I don't know what you're up. Hmm, where he go? Susan goes inside, terrified, and that leads to one of the best scenes in all horror movie history. When I first saw that, I was scared of my bed for days. I didn't know this before, but that apartment is huge. There is no way a pair of students could afford that. You're probably thinking, what are you talking about? I would even say it's kind of small. Yeah, you'd be right if you weren't in Japan. I don't know where they live, but near Tokyo Center, that would be at least 3,000 US dollars. Definitely not a Japanese moment. Could you take out like, one of the... Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you, thank you, okay. Ooh, shower scene. Oh! <laughs> the care center, Alex's joke walking very slow. I love that Raimi's face. Look at it, look at it, look, it's priceless. Karen is reading an article detailing what happened three years ago. She decides to visit Peter's wife and ask her about any information on Kayako, one of the victims of the crime. Peter's wife gives Karen some pictures from the time her husband was a professor, and Karen finds something very disturbing. Once again, going back in time, Peter receives a letter from Kejako, a former student who, unfortunately, he doesn't remember at all. He goes to her house, but no one opens the door. Around it, though, Peter sees Toshio, who's really weak and shows some wounds. Too bad Toshio is a ghost at that point. 
Karen talks to Detective Nakagawa, who's kind of aware of the curse and not very hopeful about it. Nakagawa gets to the house with some gasoline, ready to burn down the place. He hears noises coming out of the bathroom and stupidly goes to see. Come on, you look like you had everything under control, man. Karen's boyfriend Doc left a message on the answering machine. Since Karen's been away all day, he's worried about her. So Doc went to the house looking for her. Everybody's gonna end up dead, right? I should have known. It's a Japanese film. Everybody dies. What, what was I thinking? What was I thinking reviewing this? Karen runs, but it's too late. Karen doesn't find Doc. But Peter, in what seems to be a look to the past, picking up right after Peter found Toshio. Peter goes to Kayako's painting room, finding all kinds of creepy stuff. Kayako was actually obsessed with Peter, adding up to the creepiness. He also finds Kayako's body, kept in the attic. Meanwhile, Toshio is swinging his dead father, making clear Kayako's husband killed Kayako, Toshio, the cat, the cat, even the cat, come on, and himself after finding out about Kayako's obsession. Doc reaches Karen's leg. She attempts to take him out of the house, but Kayako is faster when you're dragging someone around. Oh man, that is so... Finding the gasoline for Karen, the only hope is to burn the house. Somehow, Karen survived? She's asked to identify Doc's scarves. Oh man! Oh man! Great movie, huh? Okay, count no toki. Reoshimas. Nani? Well, for a movie taking place in Japan and uh, a Japanese director, uh, the count is a bit low. But, well, it doesn't mean the movie wasn't good. That's it for today. Remember, next time, we'll be checking out A Quiet Place. Shouldn't that, don't that, right? Okay, sorry. Have a nice day.